Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about ice. But things about ice you probably didn't know and types of ice you may have never heard of before. We're still going to be talking about water ice, but different type of water ice. Extraterrestrial water ice. So let's discuss some of these new discoveries including the most recent study that just found yet another type of ice we didn't know existed and let's start with the idea of ice, water ice. So here on planet Earth, when liquid water reaches a certain temperature, it starts to freeze into a solid, becoming what we call ice. And as you probably know by now, we've been finding water and specifically water ice in a lot of different places around the galaxy and even around the universe. Here in our home in the solar system, ice seems to be abundant and it seems to be pretty much everywhere. For example, water ice has been discovered in the darkest places on Mercury, which is very close to the sun and nobody really expected to find any water ice here. We also obviously have water ice located right here, one of the poles of planet Mars. And just generally, in pretty much most of the locations around the solar system, most of the objects in the Oort cloud, most of the objects in any region of the solar system are going to have at least some water ice in them. And even beyond the solar system, we've discovered the interstellar ice also pretty much everywhere. But is it the same type of ice that we are used to? Is it the same type of ice that we have here on Earth? And the answer to that is not really. As a matter of fact, it's very different. It's still water and it's still ice, but just very different in structure and in properties. And all of this usually depends on what conditions this water ice is made in. For example, is it produced under a lot of pressure, no pressure or same pressure as on Earth? Is it produced really quickly or really slowly? Are there any other types of radiation involved here? And essentially all of this depends on how the atoms and how the molecules themselves start to arrange and what sort of shapes they start to create. Now, for the ice we're used to, the one that's on Earth, if you were to really zoom into the structure of this ice, you would discover something that creates these very beautiful hexagonal shapes that is generally produced as this water molecule starts to arrange itself in these hexagonal shapes based on the arrangement of the oxygen atoms, with the hydrogen atom being more disorderly and more or less forming amorphous shapes and not really having any order at all. And so these hexagonal shapes are generally formed because of the oxygen arrangement with molecules connecting to one another using electrostatic forces, but with hydrogen atoms not really having as much of a structure or as much of a dependence on one another. And because of this, scientists sometimes refer to ice on Earth as hydrogen disordered ice. So the only order present in those crystals is based on the oxygen molecules, nothing else. Which surprisingly allows this type of ice to have very unique properties, properties that scientists believe were absolutely crucial for the development of life on the planet. But first of all, because of this hexagonal formation, that's why a lot of ice crystals, and specifically things like snowflakes, start to produce various beautiful six-sided patterns. And so all of this is based on the idea of a six-sided structure that's formed by the oxygen atoms. And because inside this type of ice only oxygen and not hydrogen have any order, one of the major properties of ice on Earth is that it can actually kind of flow. That's for example why a glacier is able to slowly flow down the mountain instead of just crumbling and falling apart like a typical crystal would. And so this hydrogen disorder is absolutely crucial for the properties of ice on Earth or ice one as it's known in science. So this ice one surprisingly is unique to planet Earth. At least for now, we haven't been able to discover it in a lot of other places. But there is a lot of other ice and it's definitely not the same as the ice on planet Earth. The ice on other objects and other planets and other dwarf planets like Pluto will actually be in some way different, usually more orderly. Or in this case, even the hydrogen atoms will start stacking in such a way that they create very specific orderly crystals. Although in some cases, it's actually quite the opposite. In some cases, we also have something known as amorphous ice, which has no order whatsoever and literally just easily flows across everything. And so officially, there were actually 18 different types of ices. Everything from ice 1 up until ice 18. With ice 18 being this really strange type of water known as super ionic water, where first the water molecules break apart and oxygen becomes ionized, then starts forming a very specific structure, but the hydrogen atoms stay around and kind of form this unusual freely flowing structure on the inside. 
And although here on Earth we can usually only produce these in the lab using really extreme pressures, a lot of scientists today believe that a lot of this ice exists in objects like Neptune and Uranus because they do have a lot of strange ionic water on the inside. So this type of ice does definitely exist somewhere out there in the solar system. But generally, a lot of other types of ice that exist out there differ from one another because they can form hydrogen bonds in a very specific, very unique way. And this creates ice that's extremely brittle. It breaks really easily. Now, it's very difficult to kind of imagine this, but in some way, imagine ice that instead of just kind of slowly flowing in your hand, ends up cracking and breaking and kind of turning into dust almost immediately. And generally, the structure of each of these ices, and of course the properties of each of these ices, are going to be very different. With most of them being very mysterious because only tiny amounts of them have so far been produced in a typical lab environment. But now, only a few weeks ago from when I'm making this video, a team of scientists was able to create another type of ice. The ice we refer to as ICE-19. With a general structure that kind of looks like this, where hydrogen is also just as ordered as oxygen. Or more scientifically speaking, instead of a hexagonal ice we find on Earth, the normal ice we are used to, this is a tetragonal crystalline phase that can only form in very special conditions, very cold temperatures and also very, very high pressures. In this particular case, the scientists were able to create this using another form of ice known as ice 15 and then cooling this down to about minus 170 degrees Celsius and increasing the pressure to about 20,000 atmospheres. Which, by the way, is also something we find inside planets like Neptune and Uranus. These conditions, especially inside Uranus, which is slightly cooler, are pretty common all over the planet. But what's interesting in this particular discovery is that the scientists were also able to connect, and in some case relate, several different types of ice, realizing that they only differ in terms of the location of hydrogen atoms, not the oxygen atoms. And specifically, ice 6, 15, and 19 are very, very similar to each other, but the hydrogen atoms are arranged a little bit differently. Although the natural assumption here is that they will also probably have different properties. They have a relatively similar density, not exactly the same though, but the properties, or basically how the ice reacts to the environment around itself, are going to be very different. Obviously, we don't really know what they are yet, but they're different. Also, original ice that all of this is made from, which is ice 6, can actually be formed in a normal temperature, but it still has to be at very high pressures. Or in this particular case, it has to be about minus 3 degrees Celsius with about 1.1 gigapascal of pressure, or about 11,000 times more pressure than on the surface of planet Earth. Pressures which usually exist inside various gas giants, but are very unlikely to exist on the surface of a terrestrial planet or a dwarf planet. And one of the more interesting implications from the study is that it seems that this polymorphous ice can transition from one phase to another naturally depending on the pressure. And that's of course something that we kind of expect to very likely happen inside of these very, very large gas giants, specifically places like Uranus. Here, the pressures are very high, the temperatures are super low, and a lot of the atmosphere always circulates stuff around on the inside. So a lot of water that's present here most likely goes through these transitions all the time. But how it affects the actual planet and what happens on the inside, that's a mystery we have no answer to. With I guess the biggest mystery here being, can you actually form some sort of a maybe Earth-like life based on the ice and water present in these conditions? Because right now, what all of this implies is that the ice and the water on Earth are very unique, and that's maybe why life exists here, but does it exist on other places like Enceladus, Titan, and so on? And so all of this water that forms the surface of Enceladus, for example, all of this ice you see here, that's very different from the ice on Earth. It's not entirely clear what type of ice this is, but it definitely has different properties, different action, and of course different interaction with everything around it compared to what we have on Earth. And so various types of water we discover around the universe, all of this really depends on the structure itself, the structure of the molecules as they crystallize. But more specifically, all of this really depends on the structure of hydrogen atoms. How the hydrogen atoms align seems to determine what sort of ice we get at the end. And when they align randomly, we get the ice we get on planet Earth. And all this is of course really important in order for us to understand what happens on these various objects in the solar system and beyond. 
The majority of these objects, including the one you see right here, the moon Europa, are not made of the water ice from planet Earth. This is also this polymorphous ice we are able to create in the lab, but that doesn't exist on Earth. Although, okay, not entirely true. There's one type of ice that exists on Earth that possibly also exists in space, and that's the Type 7 ice. The type of water ice that occasionally finds itself inside different diamonds produced in extreme pressures inside planet Earth. Those conditions do create polymorphous ice in tiny, tiny amounts inside diamonds. But in outer space, the so-called hexagonal ice, the ice we're used to, is almost non-existent. Most of the ice that we'll usually find around various objects is either going to be amorphous, having no structure whatsoever, or is going to be a tetragonal containing extreme structures. And so that's why learning more about different types of water ice outside of planet Earth is actually important because it does seem like a lot of this ice on Earth is extremely unique. It's not amorphous, it's not tetragonal, and it has very unique properties that are absent in some of the other ices we've discovered. Properties that are absolutely crucial for life on Earth to survive and to thrive. And so the creation of ICE-19 and this discovery in general is actually really important scientifically speaking. But now, as the scientists mentioned in the paper, there's a quest for ICE-20. What's going to be the next ice they discover? And the other curious question I guess we all have is, how many ices are possible after all? Is it going to be a really, really huge number, or will hydrogen have a very specific number of patterns available to it depending on the structure of oxygen? And that's something scientists might be able to answer in the next few decades, but right now it's a big mystery and nobody really knows. Anyway, on that note, thank you for watching, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Check out the papers and relevant links in the description below. Subscribe if you still haven't. Share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences. Maybe support the channel on Patreon or by buying the Wonderful Person t-shirt. And maybe join the channel memberships as well. Either way, stay wonderful. And as always, bye-bye.